We welcome you back. Mike Brooks getting ready to gear it up here because we're moving into a new part of the story. This story having to do, obviously, with what's going on in uh, Oakland, California. You heard about the BART police officer who shot an unarmed man. It has set off a wave of violence in Oakland. We have now just received a part of a news conference where police have actually announced what they're going to be charging this police officer with. There you're seeing start of the video, by the way, and Mike and I are going to be going through this once again. And the question here is, why in the world, when he's just breaking up an argument at a train station, would he take out a gun and shoot a man in the back? It's what people in Oakland have been frustrated over. It's what many law enforcement officials have been trying to figure out. And now we have charges. Here now, the district attorney in Oakland just moments ago and out making a decision. Murder charges were filed because at this point, what I feel the evidence indicates is an unlawful killing done by an intentional act and from the evidence we have, there's nothing that would mitigate that to something lower than a murder. That doesn't mean that evidence might develop in the future uh, that, particularly as it develops a trial, but at this point, when you have a homicide that is intentional and there's no mitigation, it's more or less presumed to be a second degree murder. All right, let's try and figure this out now. Dan Simon standing by. He's in California. Dan, uh, no mitigating circumstances, and he used the word uh, in intentional. W what is he saying? Well, that, that's exactly right here. What he's saying is, is when you look at that cell phone video and when you talk to the witnesses, they interviewed some uh, 21 witnesses in this case, that there was absolutely no reason uh, for the officer involved, Officer Meserly to take out his weapon and fire a shot. But we've been, uh, but know, let, let, let me just, let, let me just, I'm going to stop you for just a minute, Dan. Uh, ju just to kind of bring the, the viewers back to the story that everybody was talking about last week, that it was possibly a mistake, that he got confused, that maybe he thought he was reaching for his uh, taser instead of his gun. W what about all that? Well, we really don't know because the officer has not given a statement. Of course, uh, investigators w would like to talk to him, but... Uh, uh, through his attorney, he has basically said no comment. He has invoked his, his Fifth Amendment privileges. Uh, as you alluded to, there's a lot of speculation that, that perhaps he, he may have been reaching uh, for his taser weapon and instead uh, grabbed his gun and then fired the shot. Yeah. But, but bottom line here, uh, according to the DA, there is absolutely no reason uh, in this case to use deadly force. Unbelievable. Hey, Dan, hold on real quick. I want to bring in Mike Brooks into the situation. Uh, have we learned anything since you and I have had discussions about yeah. this over the last week about the incident itself? You've looked at the video. Where, where are we with that? Time and time again, looking at this video, Rick. What we did find out afterwards, apparently one of the witnesses there heard him saying, don't taser me. I have right, a four-year-old child. There it is. There it is. We're looking at it now. Take right. us through this. Apparently, you know, again, I, I, all my law enforcement experts, I still think that possibly he thought he was reaching for his taser because you saw the one officer right before the shooting step away from him. And then you see him pull it. You, you see him yeah. go, go to tug it, tug it out again, pulled it out, stuck it right to his back, and pulled the trigger. So, you know, that's, that's the only feasible explanation that any law enforcement officials I've talked to have. And that, let, let's switch over to the other video. Hey, Dan, if you have the video of the disturbances that took place after this, where really the people in this community just went nuts. They took to the streets. They couldn't stand what was going on. And suddenly there was this confrontation with police officers there. Uh, they're saying a couple of things. One of them is that the DA hasn't been straight with them. And apparently they want murder one in this case. I mean, capital murder. How does this work in California? They're charging them with murder, but does that mean... Uh, pre premeditated, or does it mean uh, some form of manslaughter? What do we know, Dan? Yeah, that was the question I had, Rick. Here in Alameda County, when they file a murder charge, it's just that. It's a murder charge. And then ultimately, uh, if he is convicted by a jury, then the jury would decide uh, what degree it would be, first uh, or second degree murder, or in, in this yeah. case, it could actually be be a manslaughter charge. One more that, thing. That's uh, interesting. Uh, hold on, hold on just a weapon. second. Hold on just a second. Okay. Mike wanted to ask No, but we did hear, we did, did hear just, just moments ago from the district attorney's office that he said right at the end, second degree. Second degree. Second degree, which, which to, says to me, no premeditation. All right, you were going to add something, Dan. Go ahead, pick it up. Yeah, uh, about the, the, the taser weapon uh, suggestion, 
Uh, we should tell you that, that BART police officers, BART stands for Bay Area Rapid Transit, BART police officers have only been carrying tasers um, for about two weeks, at least uh, when the incident happened, they had only been carrying tasers for two weeks, which, which suggests that, that he may not have been totally familiar uh, with the weapon, where it was placed, et cetera, Rick. Is that a possibility, Mike? I mean, if, no, you're, if well, you're not I'm, used to having it, my sources it may have been two weeks, it may have been two right. months, whatever it was. My sources from Taser were telling me they've had them for a little less than a year, and there's 40 tasers that they sold a little less than a year ago to the uh, Bark Police Department. And when you, if you're, if you're carrying a taser, you have to go through standardized tra taser training to be able to, to, do, to carry one of these and to use it. And it all, it all seems to want to always come back to training. Uh, yeah. Dan, let, let me go back to you on something. Uh, we understand that this town is still very tense, that people are still uh, very angry. We know that there have been protests. We know that, in fact, the feds have sent some people in to do some, I suppose, uh, talks with members of the community and police there. Um, is there any possibility that this thing could escalate once again to what we saw there five, six days ago? I don't think so. I, I think the fact that you do have, have a murder charge today, that that'll take the wind out of the sails, if you, if you will. Uh, there is a planned protest tonight. I don't even know if you can call it a protest in, in anymore. Uh, but nonetheless, there, there is a gathering uh, uh, this afternoon here in Oakland. Uh, about 1,000 people are expected uh, to attend this gathering. And, and I, would, I, I would think that now that there is a murder charge, that's what they've been pressing for, uh, that the anger may not be quite as great. That's interesting. Dan Simon, great job. We appreciate it. We'll be uh, hooking back up with you as we continue to follow the protest. Uh, and, and my thanks to you, Mike. You're going to be back in just a little bit yep. as you take us through the pilot shooting. Exactly. Or, or the pilot who uh, the is founds. accused yep. of faking his own death. Uh, flip that camera around, Robert. We're going to get a shot of that uh, comment that's coming in just behind you that I was looking at there just moments ago. No, let's go to the Facebook one. Flip it over to the other side. There you go. Uh, why would it be okay if the officer were using his taser on someone that is handcuffed on his back? Why are you guys trying to make a case for this to be an accidental tasering? I'm getting, as you can see there, teed off about this. Let me bring you back. You got 20 seconds sure. to answer that. Well, I, you know, it, there was no indication that I saw that he was handcuffed. He, they were trying to get his hands behind his back. So mm. he, he, was on his, he was on his chest, and they were trying to get him to comply. And that's why you would use a taser, because you, use, you can use a taser for compliance. So that, people who are not going that, to that, would, that would have been the procedure exactly. that he's supposed to use. Right. All right, my thanks again All right, to Mike Brooks.